Hey guys, this is the fourth part of the sample mounting and polishing tutorial. On this part, we will be mount. Sorry, we will be polishing the samples using silicon carbide pads. Now, before we jump into the video itself, let me say something about silicon carbide pads. They don't last very long. If you don't believe me, you can check this video out. But basically, you want to use them for about one minute and a half. Uh, any any longer than that the pad has significantly lost its, its ability to remove material and is actually uh, is, is actually changing in a way that could damage your sample. So be aware of that and uh, uh, let's see what I have. And now we're ready to start grinding, polishing on these the samples, on the, on the front faces of each one of these pucks uh, to get the, the right cross, the cross section that we need. Uh, now. Uh, longitudinal cross sections are a little trickier, so I'll do these later, uh, simply uh, because there's less material. Uh, there's you, you have only about the diameter of the sample, or half the diameter of the sample, to uh, of, of the wire to stop and and, and get your perfect cross section. And in this case, these are pretty long. These, these go deep into the sample, so you can, you can take off quite a bit before you start polishing. In fact. You do want to take off a significant, a significant amount for you to move away from where the, for example, these wires, I just cut them with uh, some wire clippers and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have a cross section of, that is close to the clipping of, of, of the wire because that would just be uh, artifact. It would be a, a different, uh, it would, wouldn't be representative of the sample length. So we want to take off, we're going to work with these three first and essentially what you're going to be doing, notice that I cleaned all my mounting uh, material, make sure you clean off after you're done. Whenever you work in these labs, it's very important that you clean off after yourself, just it's, it's as simple as that. And these samples, uh, what all I have here right now are, are the polishing materials. Uh, we have sandpapers, basic, basic sandpapers, this is our silicon carbide based sandpapers. It, what we're going to do is grab the samples and pretty much rub them against the sandpaper and notice that I have several of them because they go from biggest particle size to smallest particle size. So you want to start with the really coarse sandpaper with very large particles. For example, this one right here is a 120 grit meaning that the silicon carbide particles that are in this sandpaper, they are um, around uh, 125 micrometers in diameter, microns in diameter. Uh, and then you have the two, 240 grit sandpaper. This one, uh, each particle, the particles that are in here are 52 microns in diameter. Then you have the uh, 400, this is 320, 400, 600, and so on and so forth. So this one is 800, and then finally you get some really fine, this actually feels very soft. So you want to move, it, it, and if you progressively polish through each one of these steps, you're, you end up, you're going to end up with a mirror finish kind of situation. Now, you, these are silicon carbide, all of these. Maybe you want, some people like to go through silicon carbide all the way, and then they throw it in the, in the vibrational polisher, and they get really nice cross sections. Me, I like to go through. I like to do some other steps. There's, uh, there's these kind of pads right here. These are, uh, these are diamond impregnated pads, and these are reusable, uh, as opposed to the silicon carbide. These, these you can use several times, and they're a little more. They, they, they help uh, to get rid of some silicon carbide particles. Sometimes you get if you do silicon carbide all the way till the end you might end up with some silicon carbide particles on your sample. So this diamond for impregnated pads, those are, those are really useful. And then you have these solutions. Uh, these usually go with a, some kind of a silk pad. If you notice this, this, this pad right here is essentially is, is nylon actually. Is, and it is not abrasive. Right now it has no particles on it that will start grinding on your sample, but as soon as you add this fluid in it, this, uh, this is a um, 500 micron, sorry, a three, three micron solution size, 
and you can see here this is uh, water based so all of these all of these solutions are water based and uh, they go from different sizes they go from three microns in size to one micron in size to uh, six six three and one and so do you see what you can probably see what I'm already getting to so we're moving from really rough sandpaper to smaller finer finer and finer and even finer and even better to something like this this solution actually you throw it in uh, a vibrational polisher and your sample is going to stay there overnight and because you're polishing with 0.05 microns in size you you will end up with a mirror-like finish your cross section is going to be nearly near perfect uh, if you get all the stains off uh, so that's that's pretty much it. Those are these are all the supplies that you would want to use. Uh, if th these samples, all of my samples actually, I can use with water. So there's no problem if I put water in my samples. Some superconductors are not that water friendly, and you have to polish with uh, uh, ethanol or yeah, ethanol I believe. So mo the machines that you see back here, they work with water. So if you have a, a sample that you can do water with, you might want to use all of these uh, sandpapers and, and these and everything over here is, is water-based, it's fine. If you have to do dry grinding, you have to do it in the fume hood. And if you have to do, oh, I think the fume hood also has the option for ethanol. So again, all of these are for water. And we're gonna use these machines back here. Don't forget to log in, don't forget to log. Uh, make sure you check if you're going to use them. Uh, in this case, I'll be using the polisher number three, which is an automated one, and that's about it. All right, so this is the machine that we'll be using. Um, let's see, basic things about this. Uh, it will be this the, the head moves, so you can actually polish uh, with your hand, using your hand with it, this plate that you see right here is going to rotate and you can put your sample on top of this rotating plate with a piece of sandpaper on the plate and you will essentially polish your sample that's how it works so but this one has uh, the this head and you put your sample in here and these fingers come down and start pushing on the sample so it's kind of automated but you still have to tell the machine what to do like every machine so uh, you turn this on and it has several buttons here that you can dial uh, what you want. Actually, um, and this is very important, sand, sandpapers, or at least the silicon carbonate sand, sandpapers, they, they're not, the particles are, don't stay here very long. So it's very important that you don't use them for longer than a minute. And once, once you put this, once you stick this here, and you start running this with water, and you start, and your sample starts pushing onto this uh, surface, all the all, all the silicon par carbide particles actually start tumbling under your sample, and a lot of them just get lost in the water and they fall off. After a minute, there's almost no silicon par carbide particles in here, or they become dull, and your sample is not being polished anymore. So, don't waste your time. Use them for a minute and then toss them out. Use another one. They're about a dollar a pop. So. They're not terribly expensive, just make sure you use them wisely and use them uh, efficiently. Now, so I'm going to set my time here. If you press the top button, you go down, and I will be using them, yes, for a minute. Uh, the speed, if you press the speed button, now it will tell you, uh, it will sign here this the head speed, and that is set to 30. So this, this head also is going to be rotating. Uh, as the same, at the same time that the, the disc is rotating. So if I press it twice, it shows me the base speed. With silicon carbide uh, sandpaper, I like to do around uh, 200 RPMs. That's 200 RPMs. So this will be rotating 200 RPMs. This will be rotating at 30 RPMs. And there's other buttons over here, whether you want water or not. Yes, I want water. And this button will turn the water on. And, and then the force. Right now, I have my samples, and I actually want to get rid of a, a good amount of material, so I'm just going to go to the maximum force here. Ten, 10 pounds is the maximum. So I will use the coarsest sandpaper, the two, 240, and 
the most for, so I can actually just remove a, a good amount of material, get away from my uh, snipping of the wire, so I can start actually taking a little more care of the sample and polishing it more nicely. And uh, so that's that's for the button. So the settings that you want this machine to be, uh, at least for silicon carbide sandpapers, is uh, you see here the time uh, is one minute. You want the speed of the head to be of the base to be 200. You want the water running and uh, the force. This uh, is you want the the head and this uh, the this yeah this button right here. You want the head and the base to rotate in opposite directions. You could make them in the same direction. Uh, opposite directions is fine. And that's it, you're ready. So you grab your sandpaper and these have an adhesive in the back that you can stick your sample, your sandpaper. Actually, let me get this wet a little bit because um, when the plate is wet, it works better. Okay. Yeah, when the plate is wet, it, um, it, it, it doesn't stick as hard. Sometimes it's hard to peel them off. And now you start. What you want to do is actually wet the sandpaper slightly before you start your run. And you don't want to use too much water. This right here is a little too much water. So there's a dial here in the back that you can lower the water content and because if you add too much water your sample is essentially going to start hydroplaning just like just like the tires and one is wet and you're driving at night at, when, you, when you're driving and it's, it's raining uh, and you uh, push on the brakes really hard your car is going to start hydroplaning because there's too much water under the tires and uh, it's same concept applies here you don't want too much water but you want enough water to get this this whole area pretty wet so uh, and, and that's it. So you get this wet, stop rotating, stop the water for a second, move the head in, you lock the head here in the back, there's a lock, uh, and, and you lock it so it doesn't move anymore. And now these two buttons that you see on either side of this, of the head, they activate the head. All the settings are set, all I have to do is press right here, both buttons at the same time. What it does is it goes down. It touches the plate, the, the base at the bottom, and when you release, it goes up a couple of centimeters. And then you can put your samples in these holes, right there, right there. Make sure the faces that you're trying to polish are at the bottom. And you put your water in, and you press these two buttons again. And this starts running starts polishing your sample, and in about a minute it will be done. Um, that's it. So let me see how many cycles of this 220 paper it takes me for my sample to start showing a nice piece of the cross-section. I don't remember, I want to stay away from the snip, and I'll show you later. Maybe this one will not, uh, will still, some of the samples will still not be showing because they, they were, uh, that only only the, the very tips of them are showing. So I want to see how far or how much it takes me at 240 to get a representative cross section so I can then start nicely and uh, polishing and go into my finer steps. All right, so this is done, the first, the first trial. And you can see here that uh, some of the samples have been exposed. You see some uh, uh, the copper wire, it doesn't really look round, so that means we still have to take a lot more. And these samples are still not, uh, they, this, still not perfect. So of course, one round wasn't going to make it. Uh, this one, uh, it looks like all the round wire, all, all the samples actually are okay. My copper marker, not so much. I'm not too worried about the copper marker, but I still want to move away a significant amount. Um, and then here's my aluminum block looking good. So what I'll do is about four or three more runs of this and all right so I've just done uh, the three samples of course in three uh, 240 grit as you can see here I've 
labeled them and this is the aluminum block this is your thin wires and this is the thicker looking guys and the, you can see the strand the, the scratches are, are very deep uh, there's somewhat of a structure underneath uh, the all these scratches but of course this wasn't going to be enough um, we're just getting ready to get these scratches uh, oh, to delete the scratches or get over these scratches through higher grit paper uh, so let's go back to the polishing lab now one last thing I'd like to do before um, jumping into the finer grits is actually, I'll turn this on, um, is, is actually making, making these edges a little smoother. So you just grab it with your hand and you put it on the sandpaper and you go around like this. And what you end up with is a kind of a chamfered edge, so it's not such a sharp edge. Sometimes, sometimes it is too sharp, like it, like it is right here in the back. You, uh, it, it cuts into the sandpaper, and that's annoying. So, I'll go ahead and do that in the back because I don't want to get cut either. They're a little sharp, and there you go. Here's that one's ready. Let me do the other one. You can always use uh, gloves if you don't want your hands to get as dirty as mine. This is pretty disgusting, but uh, I don't mind it. I'll wash my hands before I get out of here. Go. All right, so these are ready to go to the next stage. Now, one of the most important things about polishing uh, in sequence is that right now everything here has the, uh, all of these, uh, the whole machine is covered probably in uh, particles that are way too big for the next step. So you need to clean everything. Just wipe every single part of the machine. This, this comes right off. So, and then the way this, the, the, oh, I forgot to tell you guys how this goes on. So you just take this off, you can wash it off and take um, take your sandpaper off and and the way this this goes on is you see these, these two stuff right here these two uh, trusses you put them you slide this up you put them right in all the way to the end and then let this go as soon as you let this go it locks it in place and now it's, it's set it's now moving in Okay, so let me wipe this out completely. Make sure you use plenty of uh, paper towels. And you let the water run for a little bit to make sure everything's flushed out. And then you grab a paper towel and wipe everything. Make sure you remove all the particles that are left over from the, that, that were left over from our first polishing step, our first grinding step. And make sure you wash your samples really well too. All right, so I've cleaned uh, the entire machine so I can move in, move into the next step. And just to, just to show you guys how how dirty this gets, you, you're you're removing a lot of this black stuff, this conductomate, and a lot of your sample as well. And and it gets really dirty. Here's some of the paper towels that I just used. So keep that in mind. Make sure when you're done with your machine or when you're jumping from step to step. Make sure everything's really clean. Uh, let's say, for, actually for today, I'm gonna be done. We'll do the rest of the steps uh, some other day. But right now, I left this machine just as I found it. And that's the way we want you guys to work here. We want you to uh, keep in mind that you're not the only ones using this lab. There's a lot of people using them, uh, using these, these this equipment. So make sure you clean it after you're done. I'm done for now. We've only, today, we've only done one grinding step. All we did today was mount uh, and do one grinding step. Some other day we will do uh, the rest of the polishing steps and I'll show you pictures and how this uh, progresses from these uh, really bad uh, looking cross sections, very scratched, to much finer and better looking cross sections. All right, so, um, 
I'm back and I'm ready to move on with my three samples that we had before and we're ready to move on to the next grid size. Remember, uh, as I was showing you earlier that we were moving from one grid size to the next one, trying to um, uh, diminish or make those scratches a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller until you can't see them anymore. So that is what we need to do. We need to move progressively through steps. Sometimes you can do less steps, sometimes you can do more steps. Uh, in my case, I think we can get away with jumping the 320. We, we were at uh, 240 before, now I'm gonna jump the 320 and go straight to 400. I will use three papers. That means I will, I will run this for the same settings that I had them before. So I'm trying to do 30 seconds. Sorry, a minute. A minute. Uh, my base is going to be moving at 230. 250, I'm bad. My fours is going to be 10. And of course I will have a little bit of water running and um, that's it. So the first thing I noticed actually was that whoever used this last time did not clean it. See all these stains? This person did not clean the equipment. You need to clean your equipment. It's, it's really aggravating when you come in and, and just, this is, this is dirty. So I'm going to go clean it. All right, it's clean now. Uh, I'm going to put it here. Remember to put this, you only have to lift this, put that in there. Sometimes you would want to uh, rotate this up. That's all right, you can do that. Still, it kind of makes it more uh, stable. Now, it's all ready. I'm going to take my little piece of uh, silicon carbide. This is the 400. Peel that off and put it away and put my, this in right there, the water, get it wet first, you want to get it wet, and now I stop it, get the amount of water that I actually want, not that much, that should be enough, and I'm ready. I just press this right here, let's do one step and then see what it looks like under the microscope. Put my samples, one, two, and three, and here it goes. Alright, so let's go check this out. Alright, I've done one step of 400. You can see it's looking a lot better than before. Let me show you what 200 was like. This is 200, 240, now 400. 240, 400. Much better, right? Uh, you still see some of the weird stuff like this and that. Uh, one, of course, was not gonna completely take all, out all the damage that the 240 introduced. This one looks much better. Uh, so maybe this deep scratch, but um, that's not too bad. And these are though, I need to get rid of those. So I need to do at least one more step. I think one step, I think two total, it's, it's good enough. Um, so let's see what that does. All right, um, the, first of all, let's, I need to take all the old pad, take this out. Okay, let's add a new pad. Same thing, get it wide, press these two buttons, go sound, release them, and now put your samples in. Let's go take a look. Okay, this is what the 400 grit looks like on the second step. Uh, notice that we got rid of all this, all those really deep things that were there before. It's looking, in my opinion, a lot better. Um, let's see. One, two, one, two, one, 
too. Yeah, essentially all, all what you're seeing is, is what 400 grit is. What you saw in the previous one was 400 over here, but then what was that? And what was this? The two steps seem to be okay for 400, but in my opinion, I've gotten, gotten rid of um, a lot of the damage from the previous step. And these coarse grits r remove quite a bit of a material. So I think uh, we're ready to move on to 600. All right, so this was my third step for 400. I only showed you pictures for two, but this one probably doesn't look very much different than the, the, pre, than the pictures I showed you. So this is the third step. Uh, let's move on to 600 grit. Now, I can't stress it enough. You really need to clean this in order, before you move to the next step. So let me run the water for a little bit. Empty, there's nothing in here. Uh, there's no sandpaper, so I'm just trying to get this, this plate clean. I'm going to take this over here to the sink. Wipe it as much as I can. Okay, so that's pretty clean. Now I can put this back on. Maybe twist it if I want to. And uh, wipe some of the surfaces now. Wipe this and wipe it up. The, the bowl itself, it really gets a lot of dirt on it. And you don't want any of those particles that have already fallen in there, big particles from the 400 grit, to contaminate your 600 uh, step. So, all right, so that should be clean enough. There you go. Now, let me take a 600 grit paper, same settings for a minute. 250, uh, 250 RPM, 10 pounds, no problem. All right, get it, put a little more water. There's a knob back here that you can rotate for the water. Whoa. Stop it, press these two buttons, down, okay. So I think this will be the last time I show you how to do this. Um, now I'm just gonna keep doing the steps until I do the last 600 steps. So let's just, I'll just show you pictures from now on. I'm not gonna show you the whole process again. I'm sure you've already uh, understood how it goes. Just uh, put your holder in, put your sandpaper, press these two buttons. Uh, now before you press those two buttons, get it wet properly. Uh, press these two buttons, it goes down, it goes up, put your samples in, and press the two buttons again. All right, 600 grit uh, is looking better, although you can see some sc deep scratch right here. That's probably still from the 400. One step, of course, was not going to cut it. But the structure is looking better here and even better here. Let me show you what it was before. Pay attention to this one. 400 grid, 600 grid, 400 grid, 600 grid. Much better, although it was just one step, but we definitely need to do more. All right. So this is after four steps of 600. They're looking good, in my opinion. Um, let's see what it was. Uh, one step of 600, four steps of 600. One, four. As you can see, this scratch is not no, no longer there. So that's good. Um, the aluminum block seems to look a little messier, but uh, it is what it is. We've done it. We've done four steps. That's that's more than enough. You don't want to waste your time or the lab laboratory's money in using too many of these. Um, four hundred four four steps at six hundred should be enough to remove an, a a good amount of material, especially if you use them efficiently, uh, meaning uh, less than one and a half minute minute runs. Now let's stop here and. Uh, because you'll see in the next video what's going to happen for, uh, after silicon carbide patents. 
All right, guys, that's it for uh, the polishing, transverse cross-section polishing using silicon carbide pads. Now, if you want to see what I do after silicon carbide, you can click here, and I will, I'll see you later.